Hey everyone, welcome back to A Better Biomed. Today I've got a special for you guys. We are going to learn how to do a pinout on a piece of equipment. Now as you can see over here, I've got several pinouts uh, to existing things that I have. I've got Medtronic IPC pinout. Normally these are all color coded on my computer, but I only have black and white printer. So what you guys see is a black and white pinout. I've got a Leica foot control pinout. Let's see, this one is a Hannah Table knee lift pinout. And it's absolutely essential that if you were going to be repairing equipment that you should document your pinouts correctly and be able to find the pinout for a hand control, foot control, maybe a motor controller so that you can repair that connector properly and in a timely fashion. Now this right here that we have, this is going to be a GE ECG cart. Um, if I remember right, that this is a modem. And the problem is, is it's got an eight pin mini DIN cable here. And because of user abuse, they always break off pins. So what we do is we are gonna fix these things instead of buying a brand new one, because to buy this box, if I remember correctly, it's over $700. And I can buy a mail to mail mini DIN cable, which will allow me to fix two of these boxes and it cost me seven dollars and uh, 32 cents from Amazon and I get it in two days. So a seven dollar part can fix two seven hundred dollar boxes and we're going to show you how to do it using your own pinout. So we're going to start right out on the inside of this box you're going to have your PCB which has your cable and this cable, even though there's eight pins, you're going to notice that there are only four wires that come out to the internal connector. Now one of the other things that you'll notice, if you look very carefully, there's going to be a terminated set of useless cables. Now you have to be careful because sometimes these terminated cables will be shorted pins and that will tell the equipment what type of box is connected or vice versa. So the first thing I had to do when I did the pinout on this particular device is I had to pull the heat shrink off and verify that all those wires are just cut flush. They're not actually terminated, soldered together. So once we get that guy out, what you're going to do is you are going to cut off your miniature connector. So what we are going to do is we're going to cut this guy off of your old cable. You can see it right here. I cut it off. You squeeze this little connector which is actually your cable strain relief. And when you squeeze it, uh, you'll notice that there's actually some adhesive in there. So we use the hot air station to heat up the adhesive, squeeze it so that we can pull out the cable, cut your connector off, and then we are ready to do the pin out. You can see here we've got our original old eight pin mini DIN. And the original wires were orange, yellow, red, and blue. So I've got those wires separated and I've got them stripped back just a little bit so we can find the pinout. And one of the main things that we do in our documentation is we are going to draw a representation of the connector. And since all connectors are different, your representation should be different for every single device that you pull out. You can see here, uh, since it's a mini DIN, the top of the connector is flat. You can see it's flat. There's a recessed indexing mark at the top and two at the bottom. You can see there's one at the top, two at the bottom. You have three evenly spaced pins at the top, two that are closely uh, spaced over on the left side, one remote pin over here on the far side, and you got two of them down at the bottom. So that's my representation. The next thing you do is you label those pins. And I start at the top left and you go sequentially across the connector. So I did pin one, two, three, four and five are next to each other, pin six, pin seven, pin eight. Now I have the basis to start my pin out. You can see here, I have old and new segmented on my page. I have my old connector. There's four wires, blue, yellow, orange, and red. So I have those written down and ready to rock and roll. I'm going to go ahead and start up my multimeter and we're going to put it on continuity because you're going to use continuity to find the endpoints of your cables. So let's see, we put it on there. We get the bleepy de bleep and we're ready to go. So I have my original mini DIN 
I'm going to go ahead and put it in a vise so it's nice and stable. Then the next thing I will do is I've got little jumper wires. You can see I have one connected to the end of my meter lead. And I'm going to connect it to one of those four colors. you got blue, yellow, orange, and red. So I'm going to connect it to the blue. And we're going to take our other meter lead and we're going to touch that blue wire and make sure that we have continuity. And that also tests, tests your jumper wire, it tests your lead, it tests everything. So that's your first step. Check your leads before you start doing your pin out because if you have bad leads or if you have bad jumper wire, it does happen, you're going to do a lot of work and you're going to be chasing your tail. So check your leads first. We're good. We're ready to rock and roll. I take my 8-pin mini DIN and I start with pin 1 and then we go to pin 2 and pin 3 and we find out I didn't get very far you can see I got the pin 2 you don't even have to look at the meter just set it on continuity so you can hear it if you have continuity but I'm not gonna stop there so I got it I got the pin 2 now you gotta check the other pins because in some cables you will have a resistor or a jumper either inside the connector, on the back of the connector, or in line down the cable someplace. So be sure to check your cable to make sure that there's only one pin that is continuous to that specific wire. So then I'm going to take my ink pen. That was pin 2. So I'm going to write pin 2. Pin 2, blue. Next, we got yellow. We're going to go down from there. I'm going to move my meter lead jumper to yellow. Let's connect it over. I'm going to grab the 8-pin mini DIN, and we're going to run through all the pins. And you can do this really quickly. Okay, so according to my little chart here, yellow goes to pin 4. So we're going to go pin 4. Switch it over to the next. Next one is orange. So we're going to go through them. All right. So on this particular cable, I have one pin that snapped off, which is the whole reason that we're going to do this repair. And it appears that the orange cable goes to the broken pin. So I just shove it down in there. I already checked the other pins. It only goes to one, the broken off pin. So here we go, pin five is orange and last but not least we're gonna go down to red let's check which one's red one two three four five six seven eight okay pin six so red goes to pin six over here all right we have our old cable with its pin out. Now what we have to do is we have to take our new cable, and as I said, this is a double-headed, male-to-male, eight-pin mini DIN. So what I do is I stretch the cable out, I get an approximate length from the old cable, and I cut it off. You strip it back so that all the wires are separate and the little bit of ends are barely showing. I don't know if you can see that or not. So I have all the pins separated, and we are going to go ahead and set this guy in the vise. Now you can't do color code to color code, cable to cable, because every manufacturer is going to have a different color pin out and you're going to have a whole bunch of variety. So always check your pin out before you start soldering stuff up, especially on medical equipment. So we're going to go ahead and we know that we got those four blue, yellow, orange, and red, pin two, pin four, pin five, and pin six. So we know the location of those pins based on our existing chart. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and connect to my first wire, which is going to be, let's do purple. And we're going to do, we're going to start at pin one on the mini DIN. There we go. So purple goes to pin two. Okay, so as you can see here, I annotated that on the new cable, pin
pin two correlates to purple. And we're gonna go to the next one. Uh, let's try, let's try orange. Let's try the orange cable. It's all connected. Pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four. Okay, orange goes to pin four. So yellow, draw a line over. Okay, pin five. Let's try yellow. Now mind you guys, obviously I've already done this pin out and I've already tested this. Uh, so I know what the new color codes are. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and show you guys. Uh, you got pin five is yellow. And I already know that uh, pin six goes to green. So now I got my old pin out, I've got my new pin out. I'm ready to start soldering some wires together. You can see here, I've already done it. So this right here is my new cable, my old end. I have them soldered together in the correct color cord. I can't talk this morning. I have them soldered together in the new color coordination. So we have pin two, blue, which is on the old connector, goes to purple on the new. So you can see right here, I got blue to purple. My next one is pin four yellow goes to orange, and I got orange to yellow, and then red to green. Now this cable is gonna be different for, you know, batch numbers and everything, so always check your pin out. Don't just solder it up according to the colors that I'm reporting off. But you can see, I've got them all set up. I've got them all lined up. We're ready to shrink tube it, and once it's shrink tubed, I will reinstall it with the right, uh, with the cord retainer, and it will look exactly like this when I'm all done. So now that I got the pin out, what I do is I will create in Microsoft Paint, believe it or not, people still use that program. I will go ahead and coordinate to the connector that pin four and pin five. If pin four is blue, then I'm gonna put blue and then I'll have another connector right next to it that says the new connector and I'll say what that pin correlates to. Even though this is in uh, black and white, you can see that I actually do color code it. So I do a fill of like yellow, blue, green, purple. And that way there, I keep this on my Google Drive and I can pull up a pin out at any time, anytime I need one of these to be repaired. Do the work once, you verify the repair and you're good to go. So guys, that's how you do a pinout on a piece of medical equipment. Verify your repair, make sure you do it correctly, and don't cut any quarters. And you can repair stuff instead of buying new. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, stay, stay tuned because I got some really cool stuff that I'm going to get you as soon as I can edit this footage. Thank you.